this month you can get the fasting guide, the nutrition guide, and the no BS six pack formula for free. We're gonna free. give you those for free. And by the way, we're in the process right now of revamping our nutrition guide. So once you get it for free, when it gets updated, you get updated for free also. That's for everybody who has it now and anybody who's going to get it in the future. So this is how you get those two things for free. You enroll in one of our two most popular bundles. We have the RGB bundle, which includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic for nine months of exercise programming. Or you enroll in the MAPS Super Bundle, which is, has all those programs plus MAPS Anywhere and Prime. So enroll in one of those two bundles. You get the Nutrition Guide, Fasting Guide, and the No BS Six Pack Formula absolutely for free. You can find them all at mindpumpmedia.com. Shirt time. Oh, it's T-shirt time, motherfuckers. Wow. Hey. <laughs> They're aggressive. Yes, <laughs> Adam's very excited about this. I am. How many, how many He's reviews? He's been making a lot of shirts. Everybody loves T-shirts. How many well, reviews we do, did we get, we Doug? Do. We got 17 reviews. Boom, giving bang, out, boom. Giving out five shirts. That didn't sound right. Boom, mm. boom, bam, boom. Yeah, I don't know. No, Sound good, uh, good to weird. me. Weird. All right, so let me list these off. We got Higher Ed Inc., Prue Bear, 0311. Prue Bear. Control Alt Delish. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ryhawk. And then someone, 56245. All of you are winners. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Likes guys, to remain anonymous. I love all our people. Yeah. Dude, they're so clever. <laughs> yeah. So please send Too the name clever. I just read. To iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com, include your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo. yo. Oh, here goes uh, rapper like Adam that? Schaefer. Yo, yo, yo. Hey. DJ Jazzy Schaefer. Can I? Can I? Did, Next I Mike. did we talk about this on the podcast? My my little situation I had what? with the, the yeah. Onnit girls oh, when okay. I was at uh, Onnit Academy. Yeah, we did. What? Yeah. So we uh, mentioned it tonight. Today on uh, ninety four nine this morning, they're talking about this, and it's like a it's a big fucking deal. And now it makes sense why that girl said that to me. Here I keep referring to what's her a, a girl. what's a big deal. I'm not, I'm to, in, yeah, to, to refer to a woman as a girl. Oh, there's this huge uproar about it that it's just so offensive. And I, you know what? Really, I'm, I haven't really heard much about. I'm this. sorry, but I think yeah, there's some famous people tweeting about it and all the. What are they saying? Oh god, that it's disrespectful. Oh please. And I think it's such bullshit, dude. I think it's one of those things that like. Call it, it depends on how you do it. Like if you do it in a manner that is like disrespectful, then of course. But you could say anything disres disrespectful if you change your tone or at what context it's in, yeah. right? So, like I was telling the thanks, I said thanks, girls, and that's what she said that to me, and she got all, and I was just right over my head while mm -hmm. why that girl was offended. But you would say that if they were seventy years old. You know, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if they're 12 or they're 30, 50. That, that doesn't oh my god, I just pulled up an. I just literally googled what you said because I thought I, I'm literally thinking to myself. This can't be there's true. no yeah this there's no way no yeah. it's a big like deal. this is stupid right yeah and there's articles like the Guardian wrote one stop calling women girls it's either patronizing or sexually suggestive oh my god <laughs> you know what you know what so here's the thing such bullshit stop yeah. being so offended no it's you know what it is okay the person who wrote this is the one that has the problem the person who's saying it's sexually suggestive they're the ones with the sick mind because I can say guy girl man woman boy yeah it doesn't mean anything no. why is why is that what are you supposed to say woman yeah that's what because i feel like that'd be more patronizing. hey woman's yeah hey yeah, yeah. uh yeah this woman over here that sounds almost more dickish All than my right. women thank you women that's so weird yeah. Yeah. yeah no it's it's stupid and here's the what thing what are you supposed to say ladies girl i don't get it yeah that's well remember uh, that girl yeah. said uh ladies goddesses yeah. princess <laughs> like she says like i'm like to, to me that's more condescending than princesses. fucking just saying yeah Thanks, girls. Oh, like, my God. The, the, this article, is. I just want to punch it. Uh, girls, the word girls, screams gender segregated toys <laughs> and the color pink. You know what's funny about this? Wow, dude. So, so you know what's funny uh, about this This whole thing? Can here? we become any more fucking what? oversensitive? This what's gender? happening? It's not oversensitive. It's not, it's not that it's oversensitive. What it is is it gives the person who says this, it gives them power. Mm. So if I say to you, hey, yeah. hey, hey, you can't say that because that's offensive or that's 
sexist or and if it's not you're clearly not being sex but it gives me power now right because that's a very powerful thing I'm just to say. shut you down and what sir. These, and what these fucking idiots don't realize is that what they're doing is they're trivializing mm. a real thing like sexism is a real thing being patronizing is a real thing you know being sexually suggestive or you know actually being a pervert those are real things but when you call everything that you make the real act of those things yeah trivial that's what's you bullshit. Trivialize That's them. the part that pisses me off because, yeah. and that was what made me so upset when we were in on it. When that, when that, see, I keep wanting to say it, when that girl, when that woman said that, when that to, human being, yeah, like that, <laughs> when that woman said yeah. that to me, it just went right over my head because I was, I actually was complimenting and thanking the girls that were actually yeah. making my. Well, she things. wasn't even part of the conversation. She just came out of left field and yes. was like, "Excuse me, sir." Yeah, like yeah. whoa, like hey, and hey, whoa. to the point. Remember where I said I had to go back and I had to go ask to ask the girls if yeah. that was offensive to them, and it was like, no, not at all. And I'm like, okay, I just want to make sure because. That wasn't meant to be condescending. I didn't think I came off that way. In fact, I was complimenting, you know, and so right. that's such bullshit for people. This to is do. it's it's so what's happening. Your insecurities are I'll, fucking glowing. I'll tell you, you I'll tell you 100 percent what's happened with this whole thing. So what people need to realize with uh, politics, because this is this route, this goes back to politics, is that politics, politics in particular has a lot, a lot of money invested in the science of politics and how to divide people oh, and get people mm. to hate the other side and yeah. so that they vote for their side. And what people don't realize is they're, they're being manipulated. Like we, we talk a lot about on this show in particular about the, the supplement industry, the fitness industry and how manipulative they are with their marketing. Well, you can multiply that times a trillion and that's politics. Right. Politics is way more powerful, has way more money and way more, more science invested because politicians are the ones that run shit. Big business wants particular politicians in there because they get favors, they get taken care of. Like there's a lot of fucking money and power in politics and they invest a lot of money in figuring out how to get people to think and feel a certain way. And one of the most powerful mm. things you can do in, in politics is to make someone hate the other side or hate other people. It's far easier to do that than it is to make them really like your side. This, so, and this is a fact, like if you look at uh, when there's a presidential election, for example, most of the money invested in it is not in making you like the side you want to vote for. It's mm. in making you hate the other side. Right. And in fact, when you ask people, you know, if you tell people, God, both candidates suck, most people will be like, yeah, they do. But, you know, I'm voting for this person because they're not as bad as the other person. Like they, they don't even realize they're being manipulated. And what's happened with politics rather recently is they've created these, they've or they've really really invest lots of money in what's called identity politics. And identity politics are, let's let's segregate people into smaller and smaller and smaller groups and make them feel more and more and more like victims. Mm. And it's hard to talk about this because there are real issues here that uh, that they are that they're pulling upon, like racism, sexism, uh, you know, issues with you know homophobia or religious uh, you know phobias. Those are real issues that exist, but it, but it doesn't mean that these people won't take that and manipulate it and push it. And then when you try to argue it now, you're being labeled sexist, racist, or you know whatever, a phobic or whatever. So it's very hard to to debate. But the reality is, these identity politics have have are, are seeped into culture to the point yeah. now where it becomes a contest to well, who's it bypasses intent. You know, like we, for some reason, we can't accept somebody when they say something to us and and understand what their intent is when they're describing that to us. Dude, so, it like, becomes it becomes offensive for you to tell like, someone. I don't really care what word you say as long as the intent is pure. But it just right. it becomes offensive to say Merry Christmas, for example. Yeah, yeah, like fuck, I'm not fuck off. People know I'm not. People it, know yeah. I'm not religious. Yeah. I don't have a, a a horse in this uh, in this race at all. I don't really right. give a shit. But if someone says to me. <laughs> You know, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. You don't get offended, or Happy Kwanzaa, or yeah. whatever. Pick your thing, and they're happy. And so nice I have about to say it. like five million things to accept. You know, well, make I just, sure I cover the bases. Why? Why am I going to get offended? You know, by yeah. that? If you know now the the term boy girl, we've been using that forever. Can it be used in a condescending way? Well, sure. fuck yeah, yeah. I can go to you. 
and I can come up to you and be like, you're just a boy. It's all how you deliver it. You of could, course. You, you yes. could use a term like sir and make it fucking inappropriate, right? Exactly. If you say it condescending, it's, yeah. it can be just as bad if it could be worse. No, people do not. They don't realize they're being manipulated. And yeah. what's happening is we are all fighting each other. Fucking we're all, lemmings. We're all trying to figure out who's offending who. You've yeah. got these like, uh, yeah. what I call these like, uh, uh, what do they call these like, uh, uh, oppression Olympics where, yeah, exactly. you know, who's the most oppressed, you know, individual, you know, if you're, you know. This is why I like, did you see the Dave Chappelle like stand up? Yeah. Like, that's why I appreciated it. it so much is because, you know, he, he just kind of went back as like, you know, we're, we're being crazy with all this kind of stuff. Like, let's, let's get back to like, let's not like, you know, get get so far out that we we stray away from the real problems and, and these things that like you know we've been like people have been oppressed with a lot of these things, but let's not devalue it by just throwing it out there. And let's be let's let's be oh, careful with the pendulum because yeah. this is what happens with culture in uh, modern culture is that there'll be a problem, a real problem, and then they'll swing the pendulum so fucking hard to the opposite side that they've passed now yeah. where they should be. And then they cause another rebound, and it's this pendulum swinging at effect that uh, is damaging to uh, everything from relationships to the people. The wrong people get elected, given power. Uh, we we end up making decisions that are uh, that just don't. Do you think it's possible to not do that? I do. You do. I'll give you an example. Well, because we talk about this, like that they're saying it's bad to say girls. So this is on the topic of sexism. Let's talk about that for a second. Like. Uh, do we do people realize that uh, the majority of suicides are done by men? Do people? A lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people don't realize that uh, the obviously the majority of uh, people killed in war as men. The majority of believe it or not, a massive amount of rape actually happens to men uh, in prison is one of them. Um, there's lots of issues that men go through uh, injuries or fatal injuries on the job. Very high for men. Now I'm not trying to create this this picture of like please. You know, poor men. You know, whatever. But, but there's when a case there. But what, what happens is yeah. the pendulum swings so hard, and then we we end up saying, "Well, fuck this these issues." Like, fuck these people. Well, no, that's a great example because I've heard more people bring up the topic of the word "girl" being used, and I have anyone even bringing up that how many men are actually getting raped in jail. That's that. I mean, or a, or committing a, suicide. I haven't seen any bloggers there, writing about that. I haven't is, seen anybody bring that up as a topic. There is a suicide epidemic, uh, in, in particular among. Uh, men, men are the ones that commit suicide at a far higher rate, um, and people don't, you know, they don't want to talk about it. the dangerous jobs. Like most of the most of the jobs that people do, where, where they get hurt, injured, or killed, are done by men. Now, again, I'm not doing a competition here, but when you when you take something that's real, like sexism, and you trivialize it by saying, "Don't use the word girl," right? And, not, and they're not even using context; they're just saying the word girl. Yeah, like don't use girl in a condescending way. That's different, but. Don't just say the word girl. Like let's let's eliminate that from the lexicon of American society because it's sexist. Well, you know what that does to real sexism? It trivializes it. Now mm -hmm. everybody's like, well, fuck you. I'm not listening to anything you're gonna say. Yeah. Becomes totally ineffective. So yeah, if you're if you're I mean, just be careful, man, who's manipulating you with your with real things. Cause if you're if you're in a category of people where you they can make you feel like you're being taken advantage of or victimized more than you may be actually experiencing, that is a powerful, powerful tool that they will use to manipulate you. And remember this, don't forget this, those people at the top, and by the way, the media is very much uh, part of that whole process and system, 100%. You could go through and connect the dots. It's not hard to do and see that there's very few powerful people that, can, that control most of this media, which is why they're scared of the internet, by mm -hmm. the way. If you look at this and you, you really pay attention, uh, uh, you, it's obvious they don't really give a shit about you. All they want to do is manipulate you. Yeah. And one of the easiest ways to manipulate you is to make you feel like everybody hates you. And I'm put, just put so over the victim role, dude. I'm yeah. so fucking tired of hearing the victim role. It drives me crazy. What happened to anybody? Like, what happened to you actually maybe looking inside and reflecting like, why does that offend me? Yeah. Why does that bother me so much? <laughs> right. Like yeah. someone's referring it's to me as a small boy. thing. What does that say? And if that actually does bother me, because I'm sure there's somebody listening right now who's like, oh my God, I can't believe they're saying that. Oh, I, I think that's so disrespectful when someone does that. Okay, how about this? Why does that make you feel that way? Mm -hmm. Why does a term like boy or girl, regardless, let's say it, even it is condescending, like 
how about looking at why that would make you feel that way and diving into that a little bit and looking at yeah, yourself. Work on that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Instead of like, ugh, blaming yeah. others. It's like, just yeah. the fucking first thing like, to do is just, just get knee jerk reactions about everything. Yeah. It's just, it's not a word. Calm down. It's not a word that has roots in, uh, like, like, for example, there's racial slurs that have bad roots, and I can understand those things. There's uh, words that have roots that are very condescending, sexist, racist, whatever. But the word girl is not one of them. Or boy. Or bo- neither yeah, one of they're them. They're the same. So no, you can put them together. No, you know, boy or girl. No, they're not. I mean, when you have a baby, people ask you, is it a boy or girl? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, it's just not It's just not one of those words. So stop trying to, trying to make it one. I feel like it'd be a compliment. Someone call me a boy. I still look like a boy. I feel fucking great. Yeah, That's right. awesome. I'm like Peter Pan. And I'm fucking 35 See, and years you, old. Yeah. And you just offended someone. Right. Because yeah. they're like, oh, a boy, being a boy is a fucking good thing. What if, <laughs> what if somebody said, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's a good liberal voice that you just threw out there. I don't know. That's a, that's just an idiot voice. Hey, hey. <laughs> Trust me, they're on both sides. But I just, yeah, 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 no, I know. Anyway, I just it, it's 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 funny because I think if people just realized how uh, how much more we had in common than we didn't, and how much power we had if we just realized that it's more effective for us to not try to separate ourselves so harshly and collectivize people and just kind of. Be like, okay, we're cool, whatever. Yeah, you let's said just what you be said. cool, man. Yeah, you know, and like, like if I'm if I'm talking to you, I just want to talk to you. I don't want to worry about all these fucking words and shit. Like you know my intent and where I'm coming from. I'm not here to you know to to throw stink in your day. You know, I'm just trying to talk to you. You know, stop being so offended. Exactly, Doug. Shit. Bring on the woman bird. <laughs> being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. All right, boys. First question. Oh, that was so offensive. Oh! Oh! <laughs> First up is from Casey Joe Eats Well. You guys are always preaching we shouldn't run ourselves into the ground. So why the insanity in MAPS aesthetic <laughs> phase three? <laughs> so oh, this is a good question. It qu- gets a little intense. It's an Easter egg. We put it in there to see if you guys would notice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a good question. And this is also... Um, this is why we we do recommend the order of the programs. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, now somebody who possibly just dove into Maps Black. They've never done any of the previous programs. They've listened to the show, and they're not. They don't really work out that yeah. much. And- yeah, and they don't work that much. <laughs> and then they get into Phase Three of Black. They're like, holy shit! Like, but if you've actually gone through Red, Green, then Black, it's actually there's a from Red to Green. There's already some serious oh, yeah. progressive overlap. Try Phase Four. Yeah, green. right. Yeah. So Yikes. each each program um, we intensify as we go through it, and we increase the volume. So there's actually a uh, but it's slow and gradual. That's over a course of nine months. And then if you notice that the, uh, a phase like that is only three weeks long. Mm-hmm. So we would never recommend somebody stay in that high of intensity for a long duration. And so, yes, absolutely. It's in there. Absolutely. It was intended to be intense, but it's also only intended for you to do that for three weeks. Yeah, you're I think, peaking. I think it's important. Uh, we got to be clear. Intensity, too much intensity is very individual. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mm-hmm. when we preach about not running yourself in the ground, that can look really different from one person to the next. Like if I take a high level, you know, physique competitor and they've been training for a long time, what's going to be too much for them is going to look very different than if I take somebody who's, uh, you know, hasn't worked out for a while, or if I take an athlete versus a couch potato, or if I take somebody who's been working out super intense for a long period of time and their body now is starting to hit the red line too much intensity might be not that much for someone else. So it's very, very individual. MAPS Aesthetic, like all of our programs, was created with a specific intent of adaptation. Aesthetic was created for, uh, okay, here's what we do when we create our programs. We try to create, before we create the program, we create this, um, uh, what is it called when you, uh, when you're playing a video game and then that's your character, avatar. Hmm. We create an avatar in our mind of what, who's the person we're designing this program for. 
the avatar for maps aesthetic is somebody number one who's cons who's motivating number one motivating factor is balance, symmetry, and aesthetics. And to be more specific, it would be like what would be the embodiment of that, and would be a, a stage presentation type competitor, a bikini competitor, a bodybuilder, a physique competitor, those types of of people or people who train with those types of intentions. So that's number one. That's what Maps Aesthetic was created for. Number two, it was also created to be a little bit more advanced. And I don't mean advanced in the sense that it's a it's better. Advanced in the sense that people who are going to do or the people we're creating Maps Aesthetic for probably will have or higher, they should used have. Used to higher volume. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. have a, they have a background. They have a longer background in working out uh, consistently with more intensity and more volume. Mm -hmm. So those being said... Maps aesthetic works perfectly for those types of people. Now, not all of them. I mean, again, if you're going into this and you're fucking not sleeping well, you've been working out and redlining for a long time, you've been at this calorie deficit for a long time, like you're probably better off backing the fuck off, going to Maps Anabolic and starting with a program like that and going into preface, which in fact, when people ask us questions, what, what they should do, those types of people, that's what we say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go start with Maps Anabolic. So each one of the programs has their own you know, specific types of adaptations that we're aiming for. And that means that they're going to be ideal for a lot of people and not ideal for other people. Mm -hmm. And with, for those other people, then they go do the other MAPS programs. That's why our MAPS super bundles, the, the RGB bundle and super bundle are created uh, because we know that now you've got like all these tools. Like what you really want is really if you want to maximize your body's progress and progression and you want to make – fitness, uh, a lifelong pursuit. You want to build muscle, get stronger, burn body fat, move better, just feel better and consistently feel yourself progressing on many, many metrics over years and years and years. You want to have a tool belt mm -hmm. that you can open and say, okay, what does my lifestyle look like now? What are my goals? How is my body moving right, right now? What are the things that I need right now? Okay. You wrote you, you now that you've identified what have I those been things, avoiding? What have I been avoiding? Right. You've got all these things. Now you can go and open your tool belt and say, you know what? I'm going to do a cycle of mm. maps performance. That's mm. what I need to go through right now. Or I'm I need to go through maps aesthetic or maps anabolic is the one I need to go through or maps anywhere. I haven't done any, you know, of these, you know, uh, closed chain body weight type movements. I'm going to do maps anywhere. And if you approach your fitness intelligently like that, you are going to run into very few problems and you're going to maximize the positives. Mm -hmm. And that's all working out, uh, and it really is, is minimize the negatives, maximize the positives, mitigate the potential problems. And think about the potential problems that can come from exercise, joint pain, uh, dysfunction, uh, recruitment pattern issues, overtraining, undertraining, not getting results. Like, these are all the, the negatives. Well, you can really minimize those to a small degree and maximize all the positives by looking at your tool belt, assessing yourself, and picking the right run. So if you're doing maps or, aesthetic... Yeah, just look at like your avatar example. If you were to look at like these, almost like a video game, if you're looking at powers and you're looking at adaptations, like you're trying to fill each one of those bubbles and you look and you see where you're deficient, right? So I, I look, I'm not very powerful. I'm not very strong, you know, in this direction. And, and so you look at each one of these different adaptations. How can I fill those bubbles up? And um, th that's what our programs, uh, that, that's what we focused on. Mm -hmm. We tried to make sure that we present each one of these characteristics, each one of these adaptations that will benefit the body. And you will know inherently what you haven't been focused on, whether it's mobility or whether it's even aesthetics for somebody like me. Like that's something I would, you know, I have to constantly check myself. I need to get back into, you know, more of that style of training because it, it definitely benefits me in muscle endurance wise and, and all that kind of stuff. Excellent. If you're in, if the, to the person who's asking the question, if you're doing maps aesthetic, you're in phase three and you feel run down, uh, that is a very strong sign that it's too much. It's too much for you. Now, now there's a couple things you could do with this. You could either eliminate the the the, the supersets that are in maps uh, uh, aesthetic phase three. And by the way, we put supersets in there because phase three of maps aesthetic is focused on maximizing the pump in your workout and working on a lot of strength endurance, both of which contribute quite a bit to an aesthetic uh, physique when you combine it with the other phases. But if you feel run down, there's a few things you could do in phase three. 
A, eliminate the, the supersets. So now treat them as straight sets, but keep the reps high. So you're still going to get the pump, some of the pump benefit. B, reduce the volume. So you're doing less sets or combine A and B, eliminate the supersets and eliminate and cut some of the sets down. Or C, if you're still, if you're feeling really fucking run down, get out of MAPS aesthetic and go to MAPS anabolic, start in pre-phase, do about two weeks of pre-phase and then go into either phase one or phase two and then cycle back all the I way back to I think it's important, though, to note this because I know who this is and I know that she's not like a brand new lifter. So being able to tell the difference between run down and challenging is important because I'll tell you right now, if you don't train with supersets ever and then you introduce those, it's going to be fucking hard. It's supposed to be just like when I go into maps performance because I don't do a lot of multi planar movements. So when I do like the the uh, it the lunge, much weight, yeah, the it? lunge matrix, I got to reduce the weight to like hardly anything because yeah. it just destroys me. Now that's not because I I'm like overtraining and that's a signal to my body saying I don't I don't need to be doing this much. No, that means my body is not used to this adaptation at all. And don't worry if I continue to progress through it, it will get used to that. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference too between you know oh my god this is way over training and like so you're looking for like this crazy fatigue uh really sore like if you're overly sore uh the days afterwards those type of those are signs that you should try and reduce like salsing but if it's just fucking hard to get through it well that's because maybe you've been training a lot more like maps anabolic phase one mm -hmm. if you've done a lot of maps anabolic phase one so this would be like my power lifters mm -hmm. you know that are doing a lot of singles triples and maybe never ever going over five reps yeah well i throw them in a maps aesthetic and i'm asking them to do eight eight to dog in it yeah eight to yeah. twelve reps and then i'm asking them to superset it and they're fucking just getting they're tired just as fuck. yeah they're yeah. that doesn't mean that it's bad for you that means that you you're just not conditioned for that your body is and your body's trying to adapt there's actually probably a lot of good things that's happening in your body but learning to listen to those signals of what sal was talking about is and important. let's let's real quick let's define rundown uh or at least you know try to explain what we mean by rundown mm. okay in the workout itself if it's hard and you're getting challenged that's nothing wrong with that uh, of course, we don't want people to push themselves to failure and beyond uh, re frequently. That's usually not a good idea for most people. But the workout being challenging is fine. Rundown means you're done with your workout, okay? It's the day after or it's a little later in the day or it's before that and you're just fucking dead. You're tired. You're dragging ass. You're super sore. You need more coffee than normal. You're having issues sleeping. Like that's rundown. That's what we mean by like, okay, take a big step back because your body's just not able to keep up with or recover from the intensity of the workout. You should feel energized throughout the day, uh, regardless of what your workouts look like. So even like Justin, for example, came in the other day and did a f just an intense ass, you know, hit type workout where in between sets, he was literally on the floor gasping for air. Yeah. But after he caught his breath and the workout was over 30 minutes later, like, He's fine. I'm bouncing around. Yeah, he's yeah. not like, oh my God, you know, what's wrong, Justin? Why are you on the couch laying down? Like, oh, I had a crazy hard workout three hours ago. Like, that's oh, run yeah, down. I'm not puking. Yeah, None yeah, of that yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be like that. No. Next up is UDS Cam. Uh, what's your take on fat grips for strengthening grip? Is that a real thing or a gimmick? Once you understand how muscles get stronger, then you can see, here's the cool thing. Once you get it, um, I'm, I'm going to break it down for you. Hopefully this will help. But once you get it, when you look at all these different techniques, the, the next technique is the next, you know, new thing is going to come out. The next new thing is going to come out and you're going to be able to see it exactly for what it is and what it will work for and what it won't work for. So it doesn't matter if it's fat grips or someone comes out with this new band technique or chains or use this, you know, grip here or, you know, do this lift this way. It'll all, it doesn't matter. It's all going to make sense to you because you'll understand how muscles get stronger. So just remember this fact right here. The strength that you gain in your muscles is relatively specific to how you train them. So let me explain what that means. If I take my hand and I grip it to the point where, uh, let's say I'm grabbing something that's very, very wide and fat. So my hand is not making a full fist, right? It's a it's like a partial fist. Like I'm grabbing a really wide, thick You're grabbing a bar. Pack it's like a coffee can. Or a coffee can. Yeah. And I'm gripping that, and now I'm using uh, you know, isometric strength to hold on to that with heavy, heavy weight. The strength in my grip 
most of the strength I'm going to gain from that is in that is, position. Is going to be in that position. Number one and number two, it's going to be mostly isometric, mm -hmm. meaning I'm going to have some carryover to closing and opening my hand strength, but most of it's going to be in that particular thickness of grip and for static hold. Mm. Bottom line. So, do fat grips strengthen your grip? Yes, they strengthen your grip in a new static hold position than with a sh with a smaller grip uh, uh, like your normal bar. That's what they do. Are is there going to be some carryover to grabbing a regular bar? Yes, because you're getting stronger overall. Is it going to be tons of carryover? No, it, most of it's going to be in that new fat grip type of thing. So. Uh, if you're trying to get stronger grips, mm -hmm. the thing I like about fat grips is you don't have to you don't have to like focus on training your grip. You can just throw them on the bars and challenge your grip and do your normal workout. And now you're getting more. Well, of a there's grip a lot workout. of similarity uh, between ranges of motion as well. Like you know, like I just achieved a new range of motion, and it's in this specific spot like that I'm targeting when I'm doing these isometric. Uh, specific exercise and poses and so um you know and that that carries over because now um if i'm really isolating this one part of the movement and i'm getting stronger and stronger in this that it wasn't strong before now when i'm going through that range of motion where i already had strength but was weak there now that becomes a complete movement so um as far as you know the fat grip is concerned it, you know, it brings more strength in that wide part of, of the hand grip. So now I'm, I'm closing. I still had that strength. It's just, it's like it's expanding upon, you know, what you already had. So, yeah, I think it's, it's a fun thing you can throw in there, especially if you're somebody that wants to, you know, if, especially if you're an arm wrestler or a strongman competitor, or you just have a thing for strong grips. I do. I love mm -hmm. training my grip. Throw it on the bar, take yourself through a variation workout. Variation is good too. Yeah, yeah. it's going to give you some variation, but uh, you know, I'll give you an example of what I mean by specific. Uh, how how specific your strength adaptations will be. For years, I did pull ups with an overhand grip, so my my hands were pronated. That's just the way I preferred to do it, and I also did lots of reverse curls and stuff like that. And I just for whatever reason, I just I just enjoyed that position, and I got much stronger with pull ups in a pronated position to the point where if you threw weight around my waist, I would be able to lift more pulling myself up with a pronated grip than I can with a supinated grip. Now, every sports physiologist and you know scientist out there will tell you that it's mechanically more advantageous to have a supinated grip. And that may be the case, all things being equal, but they weren't all equal because I trained pronated. So however you train is how yeah, most of that strength you're gonna get strong. is going to be applied. Yeah, so it always just comes down to that. It just comes down to and volume. And now, and, now and knowing that, that, now knowing that, take that knowledge and look at all the exercises that you can do and all the different techniques and variations you can do on all those exercises. Mm -hmm. Now you can see how you can change. You could do the same exercise, change the tension on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Looks the same, different different stimulus, different adaptation. Yeah, or, grab the bar wider. That's a whole nother recruitment process. And it can even be even le it can even be less obvious than that. <clears throat> it can literally be like I'm doing a bench press and I'm going to squeeze the bar with my hands harder or I'm going to yeah. pull my hands in together on the bar or push them apart on the bar like small thing like that will give you different, you know, stimulation. So, I I like them overall. The reason why I like them is cuz they're a cheap easy tool. You know, it's something you could throw in your bag. It's small, you know. I think uh, adding it to your arsenal is awesome, but I don't think uh, I think it's silly when I see guys that are attaching it to all their exercises. Yeah, and, you wouldn't want to do it for too long anyway. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it, because too you're not going to be using them on everything that you you do. You're rarely ever in that grip position. But I mean, I think I I typically do like the axle bar. Uh, like I rotate it into my lifts all the time. Like so, which is the you the know, fat bar. Yeah, the fat bar. A lot of like your golds, American barbell, your gyms like that tend to have, you know, those those uh, a, a series or a mm -hmm. set of um, different bars that are just a, a thicker grip. And just doing all my regular movements, my deadlifts, my overhead pressing, my bench press, doing those with those bars every now and then uh, kind of give that to me. That or just I feel like when you are deadlifting heavy weight and you're just it just kind of naturally progresses with it. You know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of guys that have a hard time with grip strength are normally the guys that were using a lot of straps 
most of the time and then now they're trying to go strap free and it's like well you just haven't given your your grip some time to mm -hmm. catch up you were deadlifting progressing your weight using straps for so long that now when you're trying to go back and do that well you should just know that you're not going to go from if you were a deadlifter for 400 pounds with straps and you've never been strapless before and now all of a sudden you get in there and you're at 200 pounds and you can't even hold the bar well that's because you hadn't trained that adaptation like to stick with the deadlift barehanded for long enough and you know this watch what will happen this reminds me when i was younger you know i, I would go to work with uh, my dad a lot my dad worked in um, like construction type jobs he's a he, he, tile setter you know did stone stone work and um I would go as a kid, and then when I got a little older, I didn't go for a while, and then I got into working out, so I started lifting weights. And one summer, I was probably 16 years old, so I had been lifting weights for a little while at this point, and I considered myself, I was pretty strong, I was a strong 16-year-old, especially in my ability to do, you know, like a, like a deadlift and stuff like that. But back then, I used straps. I used straps quite a bit back then. And I'll never forget doing, going to work for my dad and working with my dad, and then he would have his helpers who were these like – kind of skinny older guys who I was like, oh, I'm definitely, I mean, I, if I arm wrestled them and worked out with them, I was much stronger. And by the middle of the day, my hands were fucking fried. And these guys were carrying buckets of cement and sand and they were mixing cement and handling hammers and handling tools with their hand and, you know, throwing mud up on the wall with these like, you know, these, these little trowels or whatever. And my hands were fucking fried and i remember thinking to myself like I, I work out all the time i'm so strong i've got more muscle than these guys i i can't believe how weak my hands are and it didn't hit me back then it hit me much later as i became an adult but thinking back to that like i don't think people realize just how strong your grip can get like how much potential is in your hands i mean we we did after all you know evolve from you know monkeys basically so our hands are designed or evolved to be pretty, pretty fucking strong, especially isometrically. So, you know, using things like straps and like stuff like that, you're really hindering this incredible ability that you have with your hands. And let me tell you, having a really strong grip comes in handy a lot. In fact, for everyday life, it's probably one of the more important things to have aside from having like a strong core and, you know, uh, you know good tension throughout your body. Having a strong grip... Um, uh, makes a, a tremendous difference in your ability to do everyday tasks, uh, moving couches and, mm -hmm. and shit like that. So, um, yeah, definitely, um, you know, I, I'm yeah, not it's your one first contact, you Dude. know, to anything. So, yeah, why wouldn't you? And, and that's what's so interesting. I remember thinking back to when we would train as a group for football or basketball or whatever. If we do group training, we were always taught to use these wrist straps. And so I didn't really develop and, and uh, grow that, that, that grip strength like I could have uh, while I was getting all these gains um, from moving a lot of weight, you know, as I was, as I was growing up. So that's something I had to catch up on, Dude, which, was, which was a misstep. You ever throw a hammer around for a whole day? Throw yeah, a hammer. Yeah, no, like, oh. like, yeah, go work on oh, something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah. fucking destroyed your hands after? Killed me, dude. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I, used to, I used to actually do a lot of lumberjack shit where all I was doing was chopping wood for, like, the whole neighborhood for, like, the entire summer. And, uh, dude, yeah, my hands would get so fried. Oh. That explains all the flannels. Yeah. Hey, you know what I'm excited about? What End of the month, bro. Oh. End of the month. We've got Wim Hof coming, coming into town. The Wim Hof dude. certification yes. course. Yes. Coming here you ready to get cold as fuck or what? <laughs> <laughs> and Dude, superhuman. If you don't know what Wim Hof is, uh, first of all, it's name. It's the it's the last name of a, a guy who, uh, or it's the name of a guy who has developed this breathing technique that has gotten him to be able to control the automatic mm. parts of his body, like slowing, like you know, controlling his body temperature and affect the and uh, immune system, affecting the immune system. Like it's pretty fucking amazing. Lots of science supporting it. We have a certification coming here at Mind Pump Media. This one I'm most excited about because uh, we, we've got it, we had a chance to talk to some top athletes um, and you know biohackers and whatever. Every single one of them says Wim Hof. Like they bring mm -hmm. up all these different things that they do and they're like, Wim Hof is the shit. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm excited for this one. To sign up, you go to mindpumpmedia.com and go under the events calendar and then you can enroll yourself. It's uh, April 29th and the 30th. So it's a Saturday and Sunday, end of the month. Um, it definitely will probably fill up pretty fast. So if you guys haven't got on there and signed up, get to the website, mindpumpmedia.com and then check it out. Next up is Callum Pankhurst. 
Have you ever trained someone that suddenly loses motivation for training? How do you counter this and get them back into fitness? All the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably more common that than you probably have somebody who just like executes like and is motivated, mm-hmm. right? I mean, wouldn't you say so? Yeah, this is a tough one. Uh, I did have this happen less and less as I got better as a trainer. So um, back in the day, I remember thinking, you know, oh, it's just – I would put it on the person. Like, oh, they're losing motivation. It's a character flaw. They're lazy. Mm. Uh, you know, this is just what happens. I'm just going to get another client. Uh, to fill in that spot. And then as I became a little bit more, uh, uh, at least gained the ability to kind of say, okay, what, what am I doing to this? Maybe I'm contributing to some mm-hmm. of this. I realized that there was a couple things I was doing that would contribute to people losing motivation. One of them was the over-application of intensity in my workouts. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people come in and say, I want to lose, you know, 30 pounds. I want to get in shape. So I train them really fucking hard and I throw everything but the kitchen sink at them in terms of exercise and nutrition. And they would be super motivated. They would come into every workout and they would tell me how much they loved it. But the inevitable fizzle out. The the inevitably would fizzle out uh, either because they're fatigued, tired, or that's a level of intensity that just requires sheer will. And unless you absolutely love exercise, you're probably going to lose that battle and they would end up stopping at some point. So that was one mistake that I had. The second mistake was that I would... uh, kind of make fe- people feel bad for stopping their workout so mm. i would i would i would allow them to judge themselves so for you it. feed into the guilt of it yeah um, and that that's a losing you know that's that's not really a winning battle because eventually i remember thinking to myself a while ago like i had i had this one client who would train me uh three days a week consistently three days a week and after about six months then she kind of lost motivation she went down to two days a week and then she wanted to go down to one day a week and my response was early in my career. My response to her was, "Well, it's not worth it. If you're not, if you're only going to come once a week, don't come to the gym anymore. Like, just that's that's ridiculous. You can't get motivated to come to the gym." I would tell go her, home and eat cheetos. Yeah, I tell her all these things like, like, look, you have time after work or before work, and my schedule's open for you. And you know, but if you don't want to make the time, then just wait till you're ready. You know, and I was just kind of putting it on them, thinking that would motivate them, and of course, it didn't. And then uh, one of my one of my friends, uh, who's uh, you know, really really good coach told me and said, well, you know, how did that work out for you? And I'd be like, well, they haven't, <laughs> they never came back. And I said, okay, well, maybe, maybe, maybe if you think, if you kind of consider that one day a week with you is better than no days a week. Mm. So you really haven't helped them. And I remember thinking like, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, yeah you're right. It, it totally does. Like if you start to to pull back and, and, and reflect on like how you're coaching them, like you could see how, because I, I noticed that too, if I'm, I'm a little bit more, hard you know as far as like oh you're you're not hitting these marks and um all these things i'm trying to explain a lot of like uh of the the missteps and and not really focusing on um you know how we can reframe this so it's like it's more of an inviting environment where they're they're there to thrive they're already there to uh, to improve themselves, why am I why am I hammering them for all these missteps, and, and why am I not highlighting like and and taking a different angle and showing them you know where they are hitting marks? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I had to I had to assess the same thing where it was either intensity or um, I just felt like maybe it was uh, something that happened to them. It was a life moment, you know. Maybe they're having some kind of crisis that I didn't even know about, but I was just too focused on like getting their goal and 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 getting them in shape and uh you you have to be a little bit more empathetic and you have to be you have to understand the psychology a little bit more in depth to uh really reach a lot of these people that are struggling through other things in life not just fitness well give them options and think about it this way when it got to the point when my clients called me and wanted to come in because they were stressed, because yeah. they were tired, because they hurt, you know, had a back ache or didn't sleep well t- last night. Sal, you mind if I come in, you know, and see you an extra day? Like once that started happening, uh, people didn't, um, people became extremely con- consistent. They didn't stop nearly. My, 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 my drop off rate was reduced dramatically. I mean, you got to give people options. Like if I have a client that's just, you know, stops coming in and I'll have a conversation with say, look, you haven't been, it looks like we've missed about three workouts. Are you super busy? Are you stressed out? If that's the case, here's what I want to do. I want you to come in and we're not going to lift weights. What we're going to do is we're going to do some stretches. I'm going to do some myofascial release with you. We're going to do a hike. Um, and I want to help you feel better. And then all of a sudden people are like, wow, that sounds like a great idea. Like 
I think I want to do this. Yeah. And you just give them more options and the consistency went through the roof. But you still never, I mean, there's still going to be people who are going to stop and there's mm-hmm. just nothing you can do about it. I'll tell you that the number one mistake that I used to make and the biggest game changer for me was laying out the expectations. I think that with all the social media, with all the marketing and advertising and all the shit that's out there, that most people when they hire you, their expectations are extremely out of whack. Like they're so far out because you see all these 30 days get shredded and oh, my girlfriend lost 40 pounds by taking this pill and oh, this person did this. And so then they come in, they hire a trainer and in their head they're going, well, I'm going to go get a professional to help me. So I should be able to get those results or even potentially faster. And so I think the mistake that I made as a trainer was they would hire me and then I would just go about my training and then I would just assume that they would piece that together instead of learning how to lay it out for them. So I have this big old long spiel that I do when somebody hires me and I'm setting the tone for like, we're barely going to see the scale move. This is what we're going to be working on. This is how you're going to feel. This is what you need to understand. So when I set the tone like that, Then when they get into their, because what happens, the reason why people fall off and they lose motivation is because, let's be honest, it's just like going to work. If you went to work every single day and you went for two weeks and you opened up your paycheck and in your head you had a salary or you made $50 an hour and you get your paycheck after working two full weeks and you get $10, how fucking pissed are you? And how long do you keep going to that job? But if your if your boss told you that hey guess what you're not going to make any money working for me right now because we need to put all this work in first and then you actually received a little bit of money at that pay period after two weeks how pumped are you? So when you set the expectations really low for what them do to what for what they should expect and then you over deliver as a trainer if it, it's a lot easier to keep them motivated for the, through the entire program and a lot of people just don't understand that when you first hire on you first get me as a trainer that. There's a lot of things that we have to work on and fix before we actually get to the goal, right? The goal is like the pretty part of the house. That's the shutters. That's the four bedrooms. That's the granite countertops. But we have to lay a foundation first. And so just like if I were to build a house for you and you came to me and you say, hey, I want to move in next week. And we're like looking at a pile of dirt. I'm going to look at you and be like, that's fucking crazy. And anyone that tells you otherwise is going to build a shit house for you. So the same thing goes for your body is when someone comes in, they hire me and I say, listen, We've got this we got to work on. We got this we got to do. This is what we should expect. This first week, you're going to feel like this. You're going to think this is what's happening. This is what's really going on. That's okay. I want that. That's a good sign. In fact, if you draw, I know you want to lose 30 pounds, but if I assess you after two weeks and we're down five and you're excited, I'm upset. That means we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing right now. I don't want to see that weight loss right away. So when you lay out these expectations and you kind of sh- you draw them a picture of like, this is what the entire process is going to look like with me. And they understand that it's not what they see on TV. It's not all these gimmicky shit ads and social media things that they see in real life, in real health and fitness and what it's going to be for longevity and what, how you're going to keep these results. We have to go through these steps and it's going to look this way. Most people just have no clue. And so they lose motivation when they don't get what they think because they what they've seen and what they've been marketed to. Uh, mind to muscle. What is one of your favorite fitness trends and one of the worst ones you've ever seen in your career? This one's easy for me. Oh, wow. Let's hear I can tell you the worst. The worst fitness trend that I saw in my fitness career was when personal trainers went fucking ape shit with stability stuff. When they went nuts with stability stuff. Like, there's definitely uh, a, uh, a place for stability, unstable surfaces and stability type training. Definitely. But man, did trainers take that shit to the next level. Like, oh, yeah. people were doing Juggling everything, dude. Fucking... They were doing everything, like <laughs> curls while standing on one foot on a Dyna disc and, uh-huh. you know, shoulder presses, balancing on a wobble board. But it was like, it wasn't something that they used strategically. It became the entire workout like that's Mm. all that was and it also became in their minds better than or a replacement for other workouts i remember trainers saying oh squats you know squats on a on a wobble board so much better than traditional barbell squats like that's that's just do that don't do the barbell squats anymore and i would scratch my head 
because you know I I knew that uh, there's definitely a place for it, but you can't replace your good old fashioned power generating movements that are going to give you all this carryover. Right. So for me, that was just one thing that, and probably because right around that time is when I was really in the in the corporate gym world. So that's the trend that I saw just sweep. It was like out of nowhere, man. It was like all of a sudden everything became became that and it just it just uh, it was just something that really got on my nerves. Are we going to say are we all going to go around and say the ones we don't like yeah, first? Let's do that. Okay, all the ones yeah. we don't like. So, I think the worst one that uh I've seen is the the introduction of circuit training. Mm. When uh curves and oh, yeah. express zones that and- very rapidly turned into CrossFit. <laughs> <That's> just- <laughs> yeah. I knew I was serving that one up for yeah. you. Yeah, this, uh, so, you know, when we started talking about that, you know, we you could build and burn more, you could burn more fat, build more muscle in a shorter amount of time. Uh, now it has become this, I you see it all the time too. Like it, it just pains me when I look, look over and I see this, you know, guy or girl who's carrying 50 pounds overweight and they're just, they're jumping rope and then they're doing a bench press and then they're doing some dumbbell rows and then they're doing jump lunges. And I'm just like, oh my God, dude, like I want to die just watching that. And I just know where that's heading for that person. Like I can see, I could see it on their face while they're training. They're so determined that they're so pushed and they're, that's like going to get them to like 15, 20 pounds off. And then they're not going to know where the fuck to go from there. Yeah. And it's like an epidemic in the industry. It's just got, and Justin's right. It's turned into a sport, you know, yeah. it's gotten so crazy, which is fine. That's where it belongs. It belongs as a sport. It doesn't belong as a way of training it does not belong as a way of getting in shape or helping somebody that like really needs that. Since majority, we know over 80% of the clients that I've ever trained are my middle aged soccer mom who needs to lose 30 to 40 pounds, has all kinds of muscle imbalances and, and postural issues or surgery that they've had. That is like the average That's, client. Yeah. And then you throw them in a circuit. Yeah. It's probably the worst thing you could do. I know. Yeah. So to me, that it, that was the worst thing that ever hit the fitness industry. And it's, it's not to say that you can't do a circuit training or it doesn't have its place. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying for the majority of people and then how many people we see doing it just like a majority of people that I see doing CrossFit that don't belong in CrossFit because they're not ready for that okay, type of Okay, now I'm going to take this on to the other end of the spectrum. We're going to talk about vanity. Okay, so my my issue, <laughs> too, what I see Bring it, Justin. being a fucking huge problem is is preaching all these uh, – this basically you're you're talking about people that have massive insecurities and we're supposed to look like certain people. So what – we glorify these these models and these people that um, do by any means necessary to to achieve a specific look, and so you know that has nothing to do with being healthy and fit and optimal <laughs> and moving and uh, being efficient and and working with your body. So I'm looking at things as is is a picture and a portrait, and this is a glorification of of a body type uh, that might not even be my body type. But people will just fucking kill themselves to look a certain way. And, um, you know, so you'll, you'll see these uh, exogenous steroids and all these different uh, mean any means necessary. We're, we're going to get to this level and we're going to look this look. And uh, it's an obsession. And it, it's just it's the wrong message. And so you get from both sides. It's, it's the hammering, like Adam was saying, as far as the intensity goes, is, is way extreme. Well, and then the vanity is, is way extreme. Uh. And it's these these poor girls. Now it's even worse because it's not even fitness related. It's just people getting surgery and getting massive asses out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> you know, just, just to get like millions of people to look at their ass. Well, to piggyback off of that shit is the what is the same cold culture are the same ones responsible too, which I could have went this direction is all the sideways chest press and the fucking right. bands on machines and all these like crazy things that you see these say, this, these people that are being glorified are putting in their routine either because they're trying to sell something or whatever it may be. Or maybe that person actually has a reason why they're trying to work on this tiny little muscle responsible for a tiny little bit of a movement because they're about to get on stage and present their body. But now I've got all these 17 to 20 year old kids that are doing all these ridiculous movements on machines that have no business doing that because 
because they're nowhere near that level of training to where they need to be focusing on a tiny little muscle that isolates a tiny little movement on your body. They should be doing those big gross motor movements like deadlifting, squatting, overhead pressing. So that same culture is feeding into that too, which is annoying as fuck. You know what sucks is so this well it kind of sucks it's kind of cool in the past uh when i would look at a like a bodybuilder a physique competitor a bikini contest you know competitor whatever and i'd see them on contest day for example when they're the most depleted and shred and all that stuff i used to look at that and be like oh shit that looks awesome like i would really like to look like that looks so fucking sick right they're so but now it's very difficult for me because now all i see is uh i hate to say it and is disease and dysfunction, and I, no knock at anybody who competes. I think it's, it's. I think it's, in order to compete uh, and get on stage, your knowledge of your body and how to manipulate every small detail is incredible, and I think that's pretty cool to know that kind of stuff. But when I look at uh, their bodies and how they're and their skin and how they care, and anybody who competes will tell you. They feel like shit on competition day. There isn't a single competitor that's going to tell you, oh, I'm my most fit and healthy the day of my competition. They'll all tell you that's their absolute worst health. And I look at them, I just see disease and dysfunction now. That's all I see now. I can tell. I can pick the things out. And it sucks because I almost can't enjoy it like I used to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, you know, we've been to contests where I've seen these bikini girls like backstage sitting down in the hallway like they look like they're about to fucking die and they're eating like a rice cake or something, you know, or, or some or, or some sugar to try and, you know, they think they're just going to pull out their muscles a little more or whatever. And I'm looking at them going, oh, my God, that's a that's horrible. Like, that's really, really bad. Well, I think that it, that part of it inspires me that there's because I, I know there's a, a lot I can do to help those people. I feel like there's there is a way to compete and get to that level without it being so unhealthy i mean and i used to talk about it when we used to when i used to vlog my you know journey to getting ready for stage that hey the whole process leading up to getting on the stage is very healthy and totally fine and when i'd hit about 10 to 14 days out i you'd hear me transition in my vlog saying okay this is the part where now we are entering a sport it is not ideal for my body but i'm going to push my body to another level to get a look that the judges are looking for on stage but talking to the audience and saying listen the, the the methods, the things that I'm going to take my body through these final 10 days or so mm-hmm. is not ideal. It's not ideal at all whatsoever for overall health. And, you know, and I think there's ways that if you do it right, you could argue that for that short period of time, it could be uh, healthy if done correctly. The problem is, you know, 95 percent plus of them are not They're be, They're hiring coaches that are coaching 30, you know, other coaches. Uh, athletes that are all getting similar diets and similar workout routines and similar cardio recommendations and it's a fucking disaster you know and it's getting worse i I had somebody contact me about her nutrition she's wondering why she wasn't having her period uh she felt horrible she's having skinny like like basically just a list of things wrong with her young girl and uh i said well what does your nutrition look like she's like well this is what i was eating for the last six weeks and it was frightening it was like it was like 10 to 15 grams of fat a day and like around 50 grams of carbs and it was all protein and i'm i told her immediately i'm like listen you you need to eat some carbs and some fats and go to the doctor and get tested and get checked because that was extremely damaging what you just did you just put your body through is very very damaging you take you've got no essential fatty acids Mm. or very little uh your body isn't running off of carbs either because they're so, so low so all you're doing is taking is running off protein and um, you need to go make sure everything's in balance and then start bumping those things up. So it's, it's, it, is, it is a crazy world. But Adam, the way you position it is, I mean, it's beautiful, right? It's, it is a sport. Like all sports, there's an unhealthy component to it. Understanding that I think is real important. As far as favorite fitness trend. Yeah, let's talk about positive stuff. I'll tell you what. One of my favorite fitness trends is, uh, and I think the pendulum went real far in one direction with this, but now it's kind of balanced out. Is the functional patterns? I was just gonna, uh, I was gonna say the same thing right now. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. Now, mm-hmm. when it first started, it, the pendulum went too far in that direction. It became uh, like like mimicking everything you do in everyday life with weights, and uh, you know, so which I think is wrong because I think that there are movements you do specific to weights that have tremendous carryover to the rest of your life. Like like most most of everyday life, you're not gonna squat with something on your traps like a barbell, will, right? But barbell squats are fucking amazing, and they give you lots of carryover. But the fun, the, now that the pendulum the pendulum's kind of come in the middle, I love like 
how people are adding to their routines, uh, kettlebell training, mace bell training, club stuff, you know, training, body weight movements, movements on the floor that mimic animal, you know, type patterning. Uh, people are now working on strengthening their feet. You saw you, you saw that trend start to come up a little bit. Like I love that kind of stuff because it's 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 helping people progress their fitness to newer and newer levels and it's giving people more and more tools. So mm-hmm. I I'm going to go with you with the whole mobility movement, but I'm also going to caution those at the same time because mm-hmm. like every other trend that I've liked that you've seen in the fitness industry, it it's just it, we can't help but put people it can in be a, tribal too. You fucking yeah. A it's tribal. It's beyond tribal. In fact, I guarantee most of you that have a mobility specialist guy that you follow Look at his page. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guarantee that's all he does. You know, mm-hmm. like, and and here's the thing, like, like everything else, and and that I'm gonna go with that one because I'm with you, Sal, on that. Like, I 100 yeah, percent believe. Let's stay that, positive. Buddy. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. one. It's one of the uh, most beneficial things that people can be incorporating. It's probably got some of the most carryovers for just overall healthy movement patterns, and everybody needs it in their life. Um, and if you're you don't care about building a lot of muscle and strength, and you're just so hev- heavily focused on movement, this is that's what you should be primarily focused on. That being said, you know it, it, you start to get these camps and these guys that now all of a sudden will hate on everything else, and it's all about movement, and then you take it to these crazy. Uh, you know, animal flow patterns, and that's all they they do. So, you know, even though I'm going to say it's my favorite, I also caution you that you know don't let yourself fall into the dogma of it's the way, you know, and it's the mm-hmm. only way. It's like it's it's an it's a another tool in your belt, and it's probably one of the best tools that I have found in the last probably 10, 15 years. So I'm going to go with that being my favorite. But again, I caution people because it's very hot and trendy right now and it's on its rise and you sure as shit will probably see it go all the way. Well, since you guys went in that direction, I'm going to kind of bring it more on the nutrition side. Like what I'm really excited about is the adoption of, of things like functional medicine, like holistic health, like these kinds of practices that have... Or paleo diets, ketogenic yeah, well, diets, all focused, natural. They focused more on the quality of food and then how it's going to actually affect your body and your, your systems and your metabolism and, you know, how your how your gut health and, you know, how, how all these things interact with each other. It's not just about... You know, how many calories do you have you consumed today? You know, what's your macro balance? Like that shit is fucking, you know, elementary. And we need to move past that that way of thinking with the fitness community. And uh, we need to think further out. We need to think how this is going to affect our health, well-being, how this is all going to play out to, um, you know, chron- like because if you think about eating, it's a chronic repetitive process. So this is always happening. I'm always consuming you know every day that's going to affect you and that's going to affect the quality of your life later on and so i feel like you know we're just now starting to think a little further ahead and not just think about look at my fucking abs look at you know look at this pr i just did like that shit is done that's that that's that's dead to me you know i'm so glad you brought that up i did a post uh uh, an instagram post i think it was on brain health yeah because uh we don't Everybody connects food to uh, how they look, like so aesthetics, right? How lean I am, how uh, maybe strength and performance, but they don't connect it to wellness in the in the in the total body, and they especially don't connect it to their mind. And when I speak of the mind, I'm speaking separately f- from the brain. The brain is an organ, so I can take a brain out and I can you know take a brain from a corpse and place it on the table, and you have a brain, but there's no mind there, right? The person's not alive. There's no consciousness. There's no psychological phenomena that's the mind and we forget and i want to do a whole episode actually on this is i want to talk about the how having a healthy brain affects your mind and a lot of people don't realize this but we everybody knows we're in the in an obesity epidemic everybody knows we're in a diabetes epidemic and a heart disease epidemic nobody talks about the mental health epidemic or i call the epidemic of the mind like i just read this statistic the other day but anxiety uh, documented anxiety where people will go to the doctor and complain about having actual anxiety in 1980 it was something like 4% of the population. It's over half now. Now, some people can say, well, we're reporting more of it now. And I, I agree. We probably are reporting more of it now. 
but that's a cop out and that's a fucking stupid cop out that western medicine loves to do whenever they see a trend of, of bad health they say oh it's because we're noticing more of it now yeah 50 percent of the population no i'm sorry when depression is going through the roof anxiety is going through the roof all these mental health issues are going through the roof and it's mirroring our obesity and and, and, and processed food consumption and all this other shit you got to look at that and say they're all tied together so can you get lean and look aesthetic just following macros and calories yes are you going to be good and well? No. Uh, and so look at that. Look at those things and, and pay attention. They, they definitely make a huge impact. Love that. Uh, listen, 30 Days of Coaching, it's available for free still at mindpumpmedia.com. All you got to do is opt in. Every day you'll get an email with new information and links to episodes where we talk in depth about particular topics. Uh, super popular. We're getting hundreds of these every single day. So go check it out. It's still free. Also, Check us out on Instagram. Look, if you want to ask us a question that we can answer on these episodes, uh, then you go to Mind Pump Radio on Instagram. If you go on our personal pages, every once in a while, you may actually catch a promo or a giveaway. Sometimes we give away shirts. Sometimes we give out good information. Sometimes we just make fun of each other. That's the best part. Yeah. Uh, my personal page is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.